Tonight on Lost in the Files, we explore the legend of the PlayStation 2 Missile Crisis. Was the PlayStation really used for weapons of mass destruction? And could something like this happen today? During the iconic launch of the PlayStation 2, a mass shortage of systems produced would anger the buyers and suppliers eager to get their hands on the hot new item of the holiday season, and what many news outlets would report as a component shortage. There are waiting lists and tickets just to stand in line and get a chance to buy PlayStation 2. And it's expected to be the biggest consumer launch in history. 15 seconds here, we want to get a countdown in front of you. Let's go! Let's go! 10! Sony would aim for 500,000 of their systems to hit the shelves in the first weekend on the market, but it was only half of what they had originally anticipated. Why? Many theories started to emerge. From as simple as there were not enough memory cards to go around, to more corrupted intentions. Like with many shortages, consumers would claim that the tech giant had manufactured a shortage in order to maximize the buzz for the new system. These kinds of claims have happened many times throughout history. These people are upset because even after waiting all night, they were unable to get their kids a new version of a game called Dragon Quest. In the US, it's mostly Mario that they want. The last Super Mario Bros. 2 was just sold. All this makes me wonder, is the shortage real, or are they holding back supplies to increase the mystique? Coleco denies it, but industry insiders say that's exactly what happened with their Cabbage Patch doll a few years ago. The company shipped fewer dolls to increase the excitement. The reason from Sony was that this shortage was caused by the PlayStation 2's graphics synthesizer. The Nagasaki factory where the chip was created could not keep up with Sony's hopes. Due to a low yield of those graphics synthesizer chips, production was gonna fall quite below Sony's 1 million unit hopes. They changed course and the tech giant wanted the factory to instead produce 500,000 units. Now, you'd think that reducing half the production plan would be more doable, right? Well, the newly formed company, SCE Nagasaki Semiconductor, was supposed to keep up with the amount Sony needed. However, even the new plan couldn't be reached, and instead, Sony had to shift production back to an older Hokubu factory to manage to reach the 500,000 unit goal. Nobody is more disappointed than we are. But this is not a gloom and doom scenario, signed Molly Smith, communications director of Sony Computer Entertainment, Monster City, California. These delays would result in Sony taking more drastic measures to reach the targeted deadline. Instead of using a cheaper, sea-bound ship, they would have to instead airlift the video game systems to America. So that was it, right? That was the reason that the PlayStation 2 was barely on the store shelves come the holiday of 2000. Perhaps it was even the reason that in 2003 and 2004, there were further system shortages. At least that was the official story. Enter WorldNet Daily, an independent news company dedicated to uncompromising journalism. 
WND would launch an article on December 19, 2000, and they would report, Both the U.S. Customs Service and the FBI are investigating the apparent transfer of a large number of Sony PlayStation 2s to Iraq. A secret Defense Intelligence Agency report states that as many as 4,000 of the popular video game units have been purchased in the United States and shipped to Iraq in the last two to three months. When I first saw this report, I was highly skeptical. So, I did some checking with computer experts I know within the Department of Defense. From what they tell me, bundling these video game units is very feasible. Now, there are special procedures in place to prevent buying computers and such on the black market. Well, the Dom found a loophole. Two government agencies are investigating the purchase because the PlayStations can be bundled together into a sort of crude supercomputer. In this technological age where factions constantly seek new ways to develop weapons and bypass regulations, why not utilize the power of something such as the PlayStation 2 and transform it into a supercomputer weapon? of mass destruction. So using a video game system for weapons of mass destruction, I have heard for decades debates on whether or not video games initiate violence or not, but this would definitely take the cake in that argument. It is true that the PS2 could be used like a PC. Linux was introduced for the PlayStation 2 in 2002. The hard disk is already installed on the machine. Use what's in the kit and bingo, you have a supercomputer. Now the United Nations sanctions prohibit the sale or transfer of virtually all types of computer hardware and technology to Iraq. However, computer-based video game systems like the PlayStation 2 are allegedly not included in the ban. Iraq scientists and engineers had apparently found a convenient loophole in the UN sanctions. Defense experts said that it is also relatively easy to smuggle PlayStations into Iraq, since customs apparently didn't view toys as potential military weapons. Gordarian and Turkish inspectors rarely examine small shipments under 100 pounds, making it possible to send large number of PlayStations into Iraq without arousing suspicion. Now the story goes that 4,000 PlayStation 2 units were stolen by Saddam Hussein. It was reported that a cluster of around 15 of them could have enough of the computing power necessary to control a UAV, short for Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. However, managing to obtain these new PlayStation 2 consoles may have proven difficult. Japan already saw this transfer of consoles as a possible threat. This forced Sony to halt all shipments until they acquired a special license. Without it, Sony would be limited to only exporting a few systems at a time. We have mixed feelings as our efforts to produce a game console of the highest quality resulted in legal restriction. Signed, Sony Kenichi Fukunaga, spokesman of Sony. So this would be difficult. 
But Sony did manage to obtain permission to export the PlayStation 2 to everywhere except Iran, Iraq, and North Korea. It was reported that Saddam broke the ban. Oh my gosh, I love next level gaming. These are the games of the future. I managed to get the PlayStation 2 before anyone could find it. These are all mine now, except the ones that I'm gonna resell. Take that, suckers. Stuck with this stupid GameCube. It's unknown if those 4,000 PlayStation 2s ever existed or not. It would have been pretty hard to pull off this loophole as Japan was taking this kind of thing seriously after a submarine incident involving a Japanese radar and communications devices intended for civilian use were discovered in a North Korean submarine sunk by South Korea in December 1998. Two Japanese men were arrested in January on suspicion of smuggling parts for anti-tank rocket launchers to Iran, so Japan's government had become much more weary of common products being used for inappropriate purposes. The Dom also would have had to have the systems re-exported from another country and using PlayStation 2s as some sort of Frankenstein computer isn't really the most practical thing. Without the 2002 Linux kit, Iraq would have faced a difficult project to turn their PlayStation 2s into a useful supercomputer. More likely, their intent would have been to simply use them as standalone PCs, which they couldn't import due to sanctions. Earlier in 2000, Sony had announced that the PS2 could run Linux, allowing it to be used as a general purpose computer, although with much more effort required from the user to do so than with their still to come 2002 Linux kit. However, using a video game system to control this sort of thing actually does exist. In 2014, it was reported that the US military had a new toy in the form of the High Energy Laser Mobile Demonstrator. What did they use to control this? An Xbox controller. According to Kotaku, Boeing, which designed the machine, opted for an Xbox controller to guide the weapon because of the soldier's assumed familiarity with the Xbox controller. In 2010, the US Air Force managed to connect 1,760 PlayStation 3s to build a supercomputer. Another one of the PS3 supercomputers led in the cryptography contest and became, at the time, the 33rd most powerful supercomputer in the world. It was said to be very energy efficient. Even the Wii was used. Scientists from the Idaho National Laboratory teamed up with the engineers from the US military and iRobot to develop novel ways to control military robots. They managed to get the robot to be controlled with a Wii remote. Though a PlayStation 2 supercomputer isn't technically impossible, but the market for PS2, PS3 supercomputers basically crashed in 2010, when Sony disabled the ability for their consoles to run other operating systems, such as the before mentioned Linux. Perhaps the PlayStation super weapons never existed, but that would definitely be for the better. Technology is a strange, strange thing. It can be used for some of the most awful creations, but perhaps even some of the most divine. Take care of yourself. I'm glad this story is likely fake, because I would rather sign a treaty of peace than a declaration of war. Take care.
Do you, or someone you know, have a mystery you would like to see featured on the channel? Then reach out to me on one of my social platforms. You can also find me on Patreon. The support here really makes a huge difference, so really, thank you. Now let's see who else made this episode come to life.